it's a situation that has a, has a, rip, has a ripple effect on rural communities around Alabama. So uh, right now the death toll in Alabama is 504 uh, 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 that have died from this uh, 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 virus. And, um, and I tell you, and with the holidays coming up, you know, it doesn't look good. I don't know if you can conclude that this is a uh, result of the uh, quarantine being lifted partially, because it seems to me if people got really sick enough to go to the hospital, they already had it before that, you know, that we were told that we could go back to restaurants. Uh, in other words, you can't go back, you, they yeah. can't say you can go out to get your hair cut in a, a, a restaurant and yeah. then four days later you have a surge of people going to All the right, Let's get something straight now. Bill said, really thinks he had it back in what time? I can date it. It was at a, got sick at a Troy men's basketball game on January 25th. January 25th, and you uh, self-quarantined uh, for, for No, a that was, that, that was, I, I thought I had it again. It, the beginning of May and uh, did self-quarantine for 10 days, had a real bad cough and a couple nights of fever, but I tested negative and uh, I was actually much sicker in late January. I was sick for about two weeks then. But now you had the test and you were uh, found to be uh, My, negative? I, yeah, I had the, the COVID test in May negative. And I recently had the antibody test. That's supposed to show if you've ever had yeah, it. You that's know, right. You, you did that? I did that, and it was negative, too. So that's the, good. Now, they, they, on those tests, it says the fact that this is a negative does not preclude the ch possibility that you may have had it earlier. Uh, it could be a false negative or that any antibodies you had in your blood could have already disappeared. So just because I tested negative, for the uh, antibodies, you can't conclusively 100% say that I or anyone else didn't have it. As we mentioned up front, uh, you know, these workers at uh, Bryant Denny Stadium and they're trying to get ready for the football season work on a $92.5 million first phase of the renovation began in November. Uh, and uh, despite Janu the, a January accident in t which two workers were injured, uh, they uh, were hoping and scheduling for uh, a home game on September the 12th, and they would be ready. But uh, right now, they've had to shut down everything. But they've resumed. They have. Yeah, they shut down for a couple of days, and uh, according to that story, that the, they resumed work on Monday. So they're they're, they're back at it. And I've always understood that it was going to be a race against the clock to have that. Uh, stadium ready, which is why I, I proposed my, my crazy idea that if Alabama needed an opponent on September 5th and their stadium wasn't ready, come on down to Troy. We'll play yeah, play in Memorial it, Stadium. It, it would work, wouldn't it? No question. Uh, of course, we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, you know, anytime you've got uh, a situation that we have, and uh, thank goodness uh, people are being responsible, but of course, everybody's heading for the beach this weekend, Memorial Day, and uh, I was uh, at the beach last weekend, and it was real crowded, but we expect it to be very crowded uh, bet, this bet. week, and, uh, uh, but, the, the, but let me just say this, the virus has not gone away, at least to my knowledge it hasn't. Well, obviously, if, if uh, these people at the uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium construction crew have it, and uh, I read this morning that Coach Pat Dye has the virus oh, and is boy. in a hospital. He also has a, a kidney issue that's oh, fairly serious. And from just reading the story, I got the impression that Coach Dye's kind of in rough shape. Uh, he, the story yeah. said that he was confused and he's battling a kidney ailment. So our prayers and thoughts go out to Coach Dye and, and his family. No question about it. In fact, uh, if, uh, we're gonna we're gonna cheer Coach uh, Die up. Coach Pat Die uh, has the Corona 19 virus, and this is, goes out for Coach Pat Die. We're wishing him a speedy recovery and uh, Godspeed, Coach Pat Die, who brought Auburn back 
bro. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say he was the guy that got it going, don't you think? Uh, without a doubt, no. Without and a doubt. And of course, uh, Pat Dye uh, is suffering. Uh, and he right was now. the guy that uh, hired your good friend and my good friend, Bud Casey. No question about with, it. Uh, and Coach Dye was a very good friend of my father. Uh, you know, they uh, both graduated at the same time. Coach Dye played at Georgia, my dad at Alabama. Uh, they both tried to play pro ball. Coach Dye in Canada and dad for the Houston Oilers. And when they didn't make the teams, they uh, went into the Army and were lieutenants. And they played football for Fort Benning. And so dad and Coach Dye were teammates for the Fort Benning Doughboys in the early 60s and became great friends. I mean, they were hunting, every weekend they could, they were hunting and fishing together. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the reasons why your dad didn't make it, he had severe knee surgery. Uh, boy, I've seen the scar. Back then, they just did not know how to operate on knees. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, and if you get one of those knee injuries, not only is your season over with, but in most cases, your you know, uh, it, career. There was a great player at Alabama, uh, two of them, I won't name two of them, that were great players that would have possibly been Heisman Trophy candidates, especially uh, at Alabama. Mike uh, Prockey. Mike Prockey, when he tore his knee up uh, in the championship game, I, I want to say, for the yeah. national championship, and, uh, and he didn't play. And another guy was from Valley, Alabama. His name was Larry Dink Wall. He was yeah. a great player. Great running back uh, out of Valley. Uh, uh, I'll of, name you one more player. That, that was Valley High School of, uh, of, of uh, what was what did they call it? That what's the name of that town back then? Uh, uh, Valley of Fairfax. He and of course went to Alabama and was a great player. Uh, a but player never from played, my, never really played because of that that knee surgery. Player from my my age, the, I think he would have been a Heisman Trophy candidate. Uh, Kerry Good oh, yeah. uh, uh, had a fantastic freshman year and uh, unbelievable game, his first game of his sophomore year against Boston College and Doug Flutie. That's right. And in the third quarter, with Alabama having a pretty good lead, he blew out his knee. Now, he came back. I think it took him two years to come back, but he was never the same. Yeah, no question. And, and we, we could make a long list of them. You know, Joe Namath had serious uh, knee surgery, and uh, it hampered his career. Of course, he... Ended up doing some pretty good things. I think, I want to say Namath was the first passer to ever throw for 5,000 yards in a season. Or four, it could have been four, 4,000 4, in a season. And, of course, you know, he's the one that uh, guaranteed uh, uh, everybody that the um, Jets would be the coach for the Super Bowl. I never saw him, and you, you might remember this, Mike. I bet you do. Uh, he was a freshman when Dad was a senior. And Dad said he was a heck of an athlete. He oh, could really yeah. run the ball yeah, good. Oh, yeah. You would never think of Joe Namath as a runner, but before he messed up his knees, he could. He was a good runner. He too. could have played Major League Baseball. He turned down uh, baseball um, uh, contracts. He could have played uh, college yeah. basketball. He was a great. Ba they said he could just shoot lights out. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, baseball. Uh, excuse me. Let's go to this this call right here. Uh, good morning, you on today in L.A. Hi, right, morning. We're coming to you from our studios on on South Brundage Street in Troy, Alabama. I'm Mike Amos. He's uh, uh, Bill Rice Jr. And of course, Mike Amos calling me in from Great Beach, Florida. Is it a pretty day down there? <laughs> no, it's. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Been uh, been raining nonstop. Uh, so we should out. tell everybody not to go. Is that right? Should we tell everybody not to go? Well, I went to the grocery store yesterday. I feel like everybody's already uh, down here. It seems like, uh, I mean, I was uh, thinking that uh, I'd, I'd, you know, was maybe getting out a little early before all the, you know, the people were coming down to rent the condos and the houses, but it seemed pretty packed yesterday already. So definitely going to be a uh, crazy Memorial Day weekend. It looks like the weather's going to be good, too. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it looks Sunday. Uh, of course, we've got a holiday on Monday, and we'll be shut down on Monday, uh, the whole place around here will, and uh, but we will be showing you a tape of a, of a recent uh, show. Mike Amos, uh, Mike, uh, what we got new in the sports world, I was looking at the Munger Advertiser this morning, and <clears throat> everybody just acts like they, they're, it's just uh, it's going to be automatic. They're going to do it. What do you think? 
I mean, the only thing I was interested in, uh, apparently there was a coronavirus outbreak at Brian Dooney Stadium with a lot of the uh, construction workers. Uh, that was uh, a b- bunch of uh, different people calling in on Firebomb yesterday. Yeah, we arrived, gave us reported on that on yeah, the show talking, yesterday. Talking about that, um, I didn't realize that uh, they'd had that many cases. Of course, uh, in the sports world, I mean, I guess you're just trying to figure out what's going to happen as far as Major League Baseball, when that's going to start back up, will the NBA finish their season, which, I mean, I hope, you know, that we'll see an NBA playoffs. Uh, of course, the NFL is going to start. I mean, they've already, you know, released their schedules. Um, golf will, will be entertained this weekend with Mickelson. Oh, yeah. When, when, when does that Brady start? And Manning and uh, Tiger Woods. That'll yep. be on TNT this weekend to watch. Right. Is, that, is that a one-day event or is it more than one day? Just, just one day event. Yeah, so that should be fun. No question uh, about it. something that uh, I've never done in my life. Yesterday I read 14 pages of Bill Rice's article. I didn't know I could read that much. <laughs> well, uh, and it, now see, mine was, the, uh, or I was so stupid I didn't know how to do it, but I, mine uh, was, uh, I read it, and I read it in the small uh, lettering. I started seeing you know, all these people compliment uh, Bill on his article on Facebook, and I was like, well, man, maybe I should finally read this. Well, did you read it on golf.com, or did you read that first version I sent you? I read the, the golf.com version. Okay, well, that, uh, the, the editors cut it. it. Believe it or not, that story was about three or four pages longer, and the, the one I sent them was 13 or 14 pages, and I sent it to you too, Mike, and the, but they, the editors cut it down to 10, and they did a fantastic job of, of editing it. Appreciate I actually it. have more questions, like, now. I mean, like, I had no idea that, uh, I mean, you know, as far as him growing up, in, in in classrooms, like at one point, the family moved down to Tampa. Was that what I read? Yeah, th- we're yeah. talking about Griff McCrary, the uh, fantastic uh, golfer here in Troy yeah. uh, that's battled severe Tourette's uh, his whole life. Uh, y'all heard me talk about it. I've been working on the feature story for, for a while now, and it was finally published on the golf magazine's website, golf.com. But yeah, about two years ago, Mike, he, uh, he got, his condition got so bad that his uh, parents didn't know what to do, was the quote they gave me. And, uh, they checked, they took him out of school. And for two months, they moved down to Tampa where there's this highly regarded medical facility that was recommended to him. And they lived in an apartment. Colin worked from his, uh, apartment, Colin, his dad. And he got two months, I mean, five days a week, he went to therapy and, uh, it, it made a difference, helped him. So how, how does that work as far as kids have Tourette's and they have their, you know, tics and they start screaming profanities? I mean, do they know these words or they just somehow say these words? Well, I guess how does that even take place? It's a mystery. The, 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 that's one of the things I learned in my research is people, there's no conclusive ideas on how to uh, treat these people. They don't know really what causes it. Uh, it's some kind of neurological conditions. I, I, people related it to folks that have had a stroke or Alzheimer's. You know that they say things that they would never had never said their whole life. It doesn't blurt out things. It's the exact same with a Tourette's sufferer. They can't control it. They're probably not thinking it. Uh, and most people with Tourette's don't say the bad words. Uh, but Griff has the form of Tourette's, the very small percentage that, that, that he, he can't control saying these, these words, he says. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, and he actually shoots, like, shoots birds at people. That's, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, he has yeah. another condition, that, that is, yeah, and that's, he can't control that. It's obscene gestures. What do they call that? It's coproxia, and the other one is copropolia. I'm not pronouncing it right. They, they call it those, when he does those signs, what is that called? That's shooting the bird, flipping the bird, and he, he does it all the time, really. Yeah. Uh, there's a funny story uh, in the, I put in the piece. Uh, Colin and Connie and Griff have a place at Seagrove Beach. Yeah. And uh, it's great for Griff to go and just relax and not worry about his ticks. But one day they said they were coming back from the beach, and it was when they had one of these Harley Davidson rallies that they yeah. have every year. We all see the Harley drivers oh, yeah. going through Thunder, Troy. Thunder, Thunder we- weekend. Yeah. But Griff was going through one of these phases where he's flipping the bird every couple seconds, and he was sitting next to Colin in the front seat, and <laughs> they stopped at a stoplight somewhere about an hour from the beach, and 
Sure enough, a convoy of Harley riders came up, and this isn't the, doc the rich doctors that enjoy riding the uh, Harley Davidson. This was the real Hell's Angels. Yeah. 20 of them right beside them. And Colin said, Griff, if there was ever a time in your, your life that you need to put your hands <laughs> under your butt and try to control your ticks, that time is right now. <laughs> And of course, so there's, uh, there's also, some, yeah. well, there's some sad stories. I put in some, some funny stories, too. Well, I'll tell you so why. Andy, uh, uh, Andy Johnson, the former Brantley quarterback, he plays uh, with Griff, and then Raymond Lefford, I guess, Jr., plays with Griff at the Troy Country Club. Yeah. But then it was also speaking about how a lot of people didn't play with him or didn't want to play with him. <laughs> of course, uh, really an amazing story. I, uh, I had no idea. It was, uh, I mean... And, and now, you know, it's a, a, a situation where, uh, I mean, I, I, what, what, what is considered at, at, at his age a great golfer? I mean, does he shoot, what, what 68, 69 yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. at that age? What does he consistently shoot? In competitive rounds, his low score is 65 at uh, Troy Country Club. Uh, but in competitive rounds, high school matches or these junior tournaments, his scores range from the high 60s to the mid 70s um he's a scratch golfer his handicap is even yeah, he I just mean, you know they're playing golf again not high school golf but uh, junior golf and he played in the tournament of the robert trent jones course in dothan last week uh had over a hundred players according to colin his dad and some of them were college players uh real good amateurs Griff finished tied for fifth, uh, but on the he shot a 75 the first day, but on the se second day last Sunday he shot a 68 four under with a double bogey, uh, and that was the low round of the day. Yeah. So he, that, he, he's going to play in the in the uh, you know the world renowned uh, uh, tournament in Delta next week or, or two weeks. With, uh, the Future Masters. Future Masters. My and, take on he's. Uh, Needs work on his scoring clubs, which he's got. That's a hundred yards in. You know, if you're going to be a, a great golfer, you got to have a short game, and he, he needs work on that. But his long irons, his drivers, uh, it's PGA quality already. I mean, there is a sound when that young man hits the ball that is just different. Yeah. I mean, that. They didn't, can, they didn't cancel the future Masters. No, no, they haven't canceled it yet. And Griff can. Uh, He's 5'8", and he's, he's stocky and filling out and getting 180. Did he weigh that much? Yeah, I, that's what I was told. Uh, but he ra routinely hits drives over 300 yards and as long as 350 yards, so yeah. he can he can hit it a mile. And uh, he hits it, like you said, over 300 yards. If, if, they say he hits it as far as uh, these college golfers and a lot of these pro golfers. We're going to go now. I'm going to put you on hold the mic and be, be right with you. Good morning. You're on Today in L.A. How you doing? Hey, this is Griff. How you doing? Griff, how you doing this morning, my friend? This is Griff, Griff. This is Griff on the line, uh, right? Well, you're not letting this fame go to your head, I hope, Griff. No, sir. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course, Griff. We've been we've been talking uh, about you, my friend, and of course, I've watched you grow up, and uh, and have just been elated at, uh, at at how you have progressed. Uh, right now, you're playing as good a golf I reckon you've ever played. Is that right? Yes, sir. Probably so. Now you in a tournament in in Dothan? I mean, in Auburn or somewhere? Dothan. Yesterday, Dothan. Was it yesterday, where where did you play yesterday? I play uh, Robert Trent Jones at Highland and Dothan, and I finished fifth overall. But uh, I shot 77, 70. I shot two under the second day. Well, I tell you what, two under on that course is pretty, pretty good. You know, your daddy, who was a two-time All-American, I don't know if he 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 did that good. <laughs> he he did a little bit better than that, probably. <laughs> Uh, I guarantee you, you know, you, uh, you know. Of course, he's a competitor. If, if anybody, you probably get a lot of your competitive spirit from him, don't you? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, now, tell us, everybody. Uh, of course, you're graduating today from Charles Henderson High School. Is that right? Yes, sir. Hoorah! Hoorah! Glory! Yes, sir. 
that goes out to you today. In fact, today, yeah, we're going to self-proclaim today, Griff uh, uh, McCrary, as Griff McCrary Day in Troy, Alabama. How about that? <laughs> self-proclaimed on this show and uh, uh, as Griff McClaney McCrary Day here in Troy. How has God changed your your life, uh, uh, Griff? It's changed in many ways, good ways and bad ways. Well, you know, of course, you know, uh, you, you've read the article, I'm sure, that Rice uh, uh, wrote. Uh, is most of it true? Yes, sir. It's all true, actually. <laughs> hey. I would be facetious. See what your reply would be. And, uh, uh, you know, it hasn't been easy, but it looks like your golf career has really uh, uh, been ignited by all of this uh, publicity you're getting. Yes, sir. I've, I've gotten several texts from people I've never even heard of. And, uh, and they're all, I mean, I, Bill, I, I think Bill got an email from the guy in Dallas, Texas, that wanted me to fly. Either he, he was going to pay for my flight to go to Dallas, Texas and play with him, or he, he was going to fly for the Troy and play with me. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Now, Bill Rice and I were talking before the show this morning, Griff, that he's heard from a guy from Russia, even. <laughs> yeah, I haven't told you. I got an email from a guy from Moscow. I've got an email from a guy from Singapore. And I've got an email from a guy from Italy that read the story, Griff. And, oh, and you know, I know you've had a tough ride and you worked hard to, to get where you are today. But let me tell you this, uh, Griff, there's no question about it that you are the role model for the Tourette system. Uh, uh, syndrome in, in the United States, uh, especially for kids growing up trying to achieve uh, uh, great heights in, in a sport, and you're you're doing that right now in golf. Yes, sir. And uh, I, would, I would think that, that you're, after reading this article, kids from all over the country are going to be wanting to start playing golf. Uh, uh, I, I, what difference... Griff, uh, do, do you think there is in the way you play golf than the, uh, the let's just say the the kid from Andalusia is so good? Uh, well, I have to focus a lot harder on not ticking than he would if he. I mean, I have to focus when I get to up my ball. I have to focus more on not ticking than I do have to than I do have to um, have to hit the shot. But I have to focus more on not ticking than I do when I have to hit the shot. Yeah. So all his energy is, you know, most people just concentrate on hitting the ball, and Griff is focusing on not, you know, saying the words or doing the hand gestures so he doesn't disturb the people he's playing yeah, with, that's right, and which yeah. that's, that's an important point in Griff, but he never does somehow, uh, and so he's not bothering his playing partners when, when they're getting ready to hit a shot. No question about it. And hopefully they, you won't be having to wear a mask like I am this morning. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, Griff Mac, Mac, uh, McCreary, uh, l l let me just say this, Griff, you know, it's been a lot written uh, in this article and wonderful, wonderful, uh, story of your life, uh, with the Tourette system and, uh, syndrome and, uh, and then of course, but the people, two people that ought to be, uh, awarded, may, uh, 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 Parents of the year would be Colin and, and Connie McCrary. Uh, what, do you, what would you say? I would say that's 100. <laughs> How many times was your mama sitting out there waiting in the car for, to take you to the golf course over the years? Uh, about 150. <laughs> 150,000. <laughs> don't you know? Now, let me tell you something. Don't you know she's seen a lot, you hit a lot of golf balls? Yes, sir. Do you do you handle anger very well on the golf course? I've never asked that that question. I mean, I get sometimes I get mad, but I don't ever like throw clubs or anything like that. I don't get that mad on the golf course. Well, that, I'm, I'm sure you, your daddy taught you that right off the bat. Is you know, it's golf etiquette. Uh, uh, a lot, some people can. Or, or, or adhere to it, and some people don't. <laughs> I mean, uh, some of the best golfers that ever come through here, you've seen them, uh, Griff, you couldn't handle their anger, you know? Yes, sir, and they didn't make it very far, thank you. All right, That's I'm right. going to ask you a very personal question. Have you ever thrown a golf club? I've thrown a couple, but I mean... <laughs> 
All right, I'm, I'm listening. I, uh, I've done a couple, but that was about three years ago when I get when I went to that stage where I got really mad on the golf course, and then I stopped, and then I, I've actually played a lot better since. Uh, and, and that is amazing. What, what, you know, of course, you know, Connie, your mother has been there by your side, but dear friend of mine now, uh, uh, Colin McCreary, two-time All-American, uh, one of the great people in Troy, Alabama, and uh, he's had great patience with you over the years. Is that right? Yes, sir. I mean, could you feel it? I mean, uh, you, I know you all are very, very close, and you played many a round of golf, but... Uh, you've also listened to a lot of words of wisdom come out of his mouth, too. Don't you agree? Yes, sir. Let's think about Griff's daddy was an All-American. Then he was a great amateur after he played at Troy, won all kinds of tournaments in the yeah, state. Oh, yeah. He's named for Mike Griffin that was a golf coach at Troy and then at Auburn and had a fantastic career. Uh, he's real f close with Ben Bates, who played on the PGA Tour, that played college golf in Troy. David Hancock was a PGA player, I think, and so was his brother. Yeah. So think of all the, 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 the fantastic golf mentors you've had, Griff, that, that really know the game of golf. We're going to bring Mike Jameis in, in on this conversation, Griff. Hold on one minute. All right, we have Mike Jameis now. Mike, we've got Griff McCreary, the outstanding young golfer from Charles Henderson High School who's going to graduate from Charles Henderson High School today. Glory! How about that, uh, uh, Griff? Yes, sir. You, you, are you excited about graduating from uh, from high school? Yes, sir. I can't wait. Well, that is wonderful. And, uh, uh, Mike Amos has, uh, has joined us. Mike, uh, what do you think about Griff McCre McCreary? No, I mean, excited to see what your future uh, holds in golf. Uh, I enjoyed the article um, that Bill wrote. He did a great job. And uh, I've been to Wallace Hansel many times in my life. Uh, that university is a, a beautiful university, uh, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. You start seeing, you know, almost 12-story buildings out in the middle of the country. So I had, uh, great facility as far as uh, baseball and basketball and softball, and I'm sure they have the same thing for golf. So, uh I'm excited for you and uh, look forward to, to watching you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You know, a good friend of ours, Griff, is, is um, um, you know, uh, is, 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 uh, is a guy that grew up right here in Troy uh, on the golf course, not far from, in fact, you could throw a rock and, and hit where uh, uh, the Williams boy, Mike, uh, 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 grew up. And he's one of the best long ball hit, hitting golf golfers in the country do are you are you familiar with him uh griff you talking about andrew williams andrew williams you are you familiar with andrew yes sir you know he has great uh uh club speed you know that, that's why he so hits it so far have you ever seen him hit the ball much i've seen him a couple of times yeah well a, a lot of it has to do because he's a big old guy probably weighs 230 or 240 and uh big tall get guy and now, and then you're at say five eight, weigh a hundred and eighty, one hundred seventy five, hundred eighty pounds. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right, now, now no tell, him, tell everybody how far you can hit a golf ball, Chris. I, I know. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. Uh, if I'm going after one, I can probably hit about three twenty five, three thirty. Yeah. All right. So what I'm saying is, all right, you're yeah, Andrew, five eight. Andrew in competition in Vegas hit a hit a in the long drive competition hit one four hundred eleven yards. That's the best I think he's done. Yeah. But but what we're getting back to is all right now you're five eight and weigh what one seventy five one eighty is that right? I'm about one eighty five. Now do you work with weights, uh, Griff? Sir. Do you work out with weights at all to make yourself stronger? I, I do it a lot actually. All right now they, uh, Andrew is reportedly say, they say uh, club speed something like one twenty eight. I think the most he's ever had was one thirty two. God. You know, and he's he's from right here in Troy. Uh, look, lived a, a rock's throw from Griff. All right, now you're a uh, five eight weight, one seventy five, and you hit it as far as he does. Uh, what is is it all about? Club speed? Is this a God given gift to to be able to hit it like this, or do you train to be able to hit it that that uh, that far uh, with your size? 
Well, I mean, my side, if you swing with all your legs, most your, I mean, we, I just, I swing with my legs. I don't ever swing with my arms. I mean, if I can just pump my legs to the shot, I'm going to hit it a lot further than I would if I swung with all my arms. Yeah. And, and, but all right now, and of course yeah, I've seen that you've got real Thomas, strong. Thomas played at Alabama, is five ten, one hundred and sixty five pounds, probably soaking wet. And he hits it probably about three fifty. I mean, you, you, is he one of your heroes, uh, 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 Griff? Yes, sir. He's probably my favorite golfer, actually. Yeah, you know, because y'all about the same size, and of course you know he's one of the best golfers out there. Uh, back I'll to that, I'll, you know who some people have compared Griff to body style. Don't let this go to your head, Griff. Uh, Jack Nicholas. Uh, he's you know, Jack Nicholas wasn't real tall, but he had the big, strong legs that Griff has. And big old Colin and people man. that know golf says that all of Nicholas's power came from his lower body, just like Griff's talking exactly. about. Do you think that uh, all right, you know, like to throw a baseball 100 miles an hour? There's not many people that can do it, and it's it's not and it's it's a God-given talent. Do you think that being able to drive the golf ball like you do, is it a God-given talent, or have you worked to be able to, to with, on your club speed? Uh, well, what's the deal there? It's a little bit of both, actually. You can't, you can't teach club head speed, but you can teach how to lay, use your legs. Yeah. And, and so you, what you, kind of clubs does uh, Griff play well? What kind of clubs do you play? Yeah, what clubs? Yeah, well, everybody's going to want to play with your, your driver. What driver do you use? I've got a uh, M5 with a Tennessee shaft in it, but it's an extra steel. Uh huh. And I've got, uh -huh. I've got irons that are Mizuno 919 forged GPX, and I've got a, uh, I got a Tyler's S and Vokey wedge, and I've got two Cleveland RTX four wedges, and I got Scotty Karen putter. Yeah. All right, let me ask you this. You play with Tyler's, Tyler's ball, I guess. Yes, sir, I probably probably with that. <laughs> you got to golf com and read this story. And by the way, Dan Smith took the pictures, which are fantastic. Uh, I thought this thing might as well be an, an advertisement for Titleist, because in every picture, Griff and Colin are both wearing <laughs> Titleist gear and hats. Yeah, maybe so. No, no question. You know, uh, I watched you, young man, and I, I watched you many days sitting on, on the stool outside the clubhouse and. Uh, Waiting for somebody to come by and and play with you, uh, you know, you know, it was hard to find somebody th th to play with you. But uh, a couple of my friends got to be uh, two of your big opponents. One of them was Andy Johnson, and of course, I know he's a dear friend of yours. And the other one is Raymond Ledford uh, Jr. Uh, those two and guys. And Lyle Wise plays a lot. And Lyle Wise, but those two, those guys have influenced you quite a bit. Is that right? Yes, sir. You know, and, and of course, you know, you played with your, your daddy, and, and y'all built that uh, wedge, that wedge green. Uh, have you utilized that gr that wedge green that you and your daddy built out of, out of the club? Uh, I, I've used it a lot, but the thing is, if you hit it on the green, on that gray green, it's so hard that it'll just bounce over the green. you got to have it short to get it on, so I don't really use it that much. Yeah, I got you. Uh, have you uh, played any... Uh, Really uh, amazing courses yet? Have you gone up Shoal Creek in Birmingham, played Old Overton? Have you traveled the state and, and played some uh, other challenging courses yet? Tell us some of those experiences so far. Uh, I haven't done any of that, actually. My dad's going to take me on my senior trip. I'm going to play Shoal Creek, the Honors up in, up in Tennessee, and I'll play um, a couple other courses like probably we're going to play Bay Hill. I'm probably going to play yeah. TBC Sawgrass somewhere around there. Wow. Yeah, uh, Scotland. I was going to go to Scotland, and we're going to play Carnoustie and a bunch of other courses. But uh, they got canceled because the guy, the, the governor of, of um, what do they call it? The governor of Scotland said that uh, if you go up there, you got to be quarantined 14 days, and we couldn't afford that. Oh, boy, no <laughs> question about it. Uh, the greatest athlete ever to come out of Wallace Hansel is Craig Kimbrell. He's going to be a Hall of Fame closer, maybe League <laughs> baseball. He played at uh, Wallace Hansville in baseball. He also uh, played for the Atlanta Braves. I don't know if you ever watched the Braves games, but uh, he's a, uh, a for former Wallace Hansville uh, yeah. product. I'm going to make a point. Griff, uh, coach at Wallace Hansville, also has Tourette's. Uh, yeah, that, is, that, that is just un-, un And, you know, that, that is very, And then Griff has the... Uh,
skills and talent to play probably anywhere. But probably, you tell me, probably because he has Tourette's. He just didn't get the scholarship offers. And there's this one coach that wanted to make sure that Griff got an opportunity. And that's part of the story. What is the coincidence, the odds of this junior college coach, he's only 24, second year as a coach, also having Tourette's. And then he learned about Griff. And he offered Griff a scholarship before he'd even watched Griff play one round. You know, uh, and now I watched you, uh, you know, as a young golfer, and then, you know, you haven't been excelling uh, in golf uh, of that long. Is that right? I mean, uh, right now you're shooting in the high 60s and low 70s uh, all the time pretty much, but your scoring has, has gotten good over the last year. Is that right? Yes, sir. Well, what's made you progress so quickly, uh, uh, Griff? I've gotten bigger and I've gotten a lot stronger, but I've also gotten really touchy with the wedges. Yeah. Now, when you walk up to a putt from 15, 20 feet, you feel like you're going to make it? Uh, not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some curves to it, doesn't it? Sir? So, what, so do we find out when the future Masters is going to be? Is that going to be next week? It's, it's June 24th to the 29th. And, of course, you're going to play in it. Uh, that, that'd be a, a, a great challenge for you, my friend. It's actually June 24th to 27th. Hey, I've got to go to get ready. Um, but I just want to thank Bill. I just want to let you know that I thank you for I'll make it trip from all way. Oh, thank you, Griff. Thank you for letting me tell your story. Well, let me just say this, my dear friend. You have set the the, the mark for folks, uh, the kids and people growing up with your uh your uh, condition, condition, and uh, you're a great, a great role model, my friend, and uh, you just keep working hard at it, and uh, we love you very much. Yes, sir. Love y'all too, man. All right. Bye. Bye. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, he has to go. He has to go get ready to go to graduation. That's right. What a what a yeah. You got to go too in a minute. I know. Uh, yeah, graduation. I found out at Charles Peterson today. You're only able to bring five family members um, to the graduation. Yeah, um, and, and you got to sit. Six feet apart, is that right? Probably. You know, they probably let the uh, family. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely got to sit, sit six feet apart. And this will you be. Know. This will all will take place at uh, Veterans Stadium. Is that right? Yeah, I want to. I kind of go. Want to go watch it and see what it looks like. You. Yeah, know, that's I don't of, blame <laughs> you. I don't blame you. I, is I it, is it not pour down rain in Troy? Mm-mm. No, it's not. Is it raining down in uh, no, uh, where you are? Yeah, yeah it's raining in Graydon. Yeah. Uh, what a! Well, I am just so so impressed with that young man. Uh, you know, I don't care who he is and and, and where where what, what he's done. He, that's carrying himself. You know, he's a, able to answer my questions, which has got to be very hard. But he answered most every question very well. You know. Yeah, I can hear some of his little ticks, but you know, he 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 probably turns yeah. away from the phone when he's doing it. it, it yeah. But sometimes his ticks are very noticeable. But sometimes they're barely noticeable at all. But don't you feel like Gop is taking a, is helping him uh, whip this? Uh, I don't I know I, I don't know if it can be totally whipped, but it really enhanced his. Uh, well, you ability. think about what would Griff be? Where would he be if he did hadn't discovered the yeah. game of golf? Because uh, he can now he knows he's got something he can excel at. He can relax on the golf course. Uh, he gets tons of accolades and compliments. Uh, it, it's really been uh, a, a, the game of golf has been a, a, a savior for Griff, and he lives on the golf course. I mean, uh, in the story I, I put in there that it's not uncommon for Griff to play 54 holes in one day. He's the first person at the course every time it opens Saturday morning, and probably the the last to leave. So he works on it. You know, you you don't get as good as Griff without. You, Tons of hard work, and he's putting in the, the hard work. Yeah, I'm on. I'm yeah, I saw where he's uh, the first annual uh, recipient of the uh, 2020 Sam Jones Sports Award at Charles Anderson High School. That is um, fantastic. That uh, is fantastic. He's uh, the uh, the male athlete to uh, receive the award, and then Nora Jones, um, Coach Jones's daughter, the phenomenal basketball player, um, won um, uh, the award to, as well. Her nickname is Tootie, I think. Or? Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah, so both, both of them won the uh, Sam Jones uh, have they, Sports Award. Have they had their awards day? Did, did well, they, they didn't have it this year, so they... I know, yeah. Uh, but that, oh, that that award will be around for a long time, yeah. and what a tremendous honor and a, a great way to memorialize Sam Jones. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. And uh, my dear friend, uh, the Joneses, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're still hurting quite a bit, and we're still praying for them. And uh, uh, what, a, what a great tribute uh, this is to Sam uh, to honor this young man with that award. Yeah, and the young lady, uh, just yes, too. Sir. I mean, Griff is obviously the, the best junior golfer to ever come out of Troy. His career is in front of him. And, you know, for... Uh, Jones, Tootie, uh, she was like the, the Magic Johnson of the, the, the team this year. Uh, she was the 5A player of the year. Yeah. And, you know, I... I she she going to uh, Belmont. People laughed at me when I've said this about her, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not toying with this, but I, I want everybody to use uh, these uh, your uh, face masks, especially when you're talking back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth, see, and, and, and there's droplets that come out of your mouth, and it, 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 those are things that you don't want to, uh, uh, you want to be careful with. But uh, the thing that, that impressed me so much about this young girl how many times have you heard me say, Mikey, she might be the best free throw shooter in town? And that included any any man or girl, woman at Troy University? Well, I mean, I think she started as an eighth grader. She shot <laughs> over nine. She, she, she shot <coughs> over 90% from a free throw line, I think, for her career, which is just phenomenal free throw shooting. And, of course, uh, you know, she was just her... Uh, Mother uh, coached her and uh, she, and developed her helped her develop her skills and uh, it's amazing. Those two athletes are are are, are you right? Uh, are uh, are athletes that that are going to go a long ways with their skill? Yes, I uh, need to mention uh, Charles Henderson uh, has decided not to retain their baseball coach, so he is one and done. Boy, that's uh, the, the revolving door of Charles Henderson baseball coaches since the great Derek Irons has left is. Still going on. Hopefully, somebody will want to take over this job and and uh, you know stay for several years. But uh, of course, uh, we had him on as a guest. Uh, but uh, apparently, uh, the school has decided to go in a different direction, and uh, Charles Sanders will be looking for a new baseball coach. Well, I'll tell you this, guys: you're not going to get anybody that's going to replace Derek Irons as a coach or as a man. I mean, he was. God given to us, to Charles Henson, and uh, everybody loved him, and he's been extremely successful everywhere he's gone. Uh, Charles Henson's baseball program is as good as anybody's in the country, and of course, uh, uh, I would uh, I would think though it would be a hard place to coach to replace a guy like Derek. Well, Henson. it's always hard if, to, if, to if he was the guy that they they measured their program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all right. Well, uh, the hard, the hardest thing is you're, you're dealing with one of the the greatest young coaches probably in the state of Alabama in the southeast and ponder at probably liberal arts. You know, yeah. he would have won three state championships in a row this year. So that's also what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a lot of kids wanting to go play for him. You know, we, have, as well. we haven't talked about that, but Pike Liberal Arts, back-to-back -back state champions, would have had to fallen off a cliff not to win yeah, it this yeah. year with the talent they had. So they could have been three-peats champions and just never got the yeah. opportunity you want a great fundraiser pike liberal arts going up against charles henderson today from uh, riddle pace field it's going to be the best of five series mm -hmm. to see who has the number one baseball team in pike county yeah uh, people <laughs> lining up the buy and, tickets. I, and of course you know school's out it, it, it could be done just as a pickup game wouldn't that be a heck of a game? Uh, you reckon how many tickets you could sell to that game? What if they right? just did it, you know, the, 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 not ask for permission from the AISA and the AHSAA? And just, yeah. Just said, we're doing it anyway. And, uh, so, Bill, Bill what's, uh, what's your next article going to be about? Is it going to be about uh, Mike Amos? Oh, oh no, yeah, no. I forgot about that. I, I, that's <laughs> going to be... Is the title going to be, uh, is, is gonna be how much do you weigh, how much do you bench? Yeah, I I'm, did an interview with your dad a couple months ago, and it's a, how he got started on Troy Cablevision 
is a, a, an amazing story and a unique story. And yeah, one day I'm, I'm, I'm going to write that story and uh, it, it should be uh, at least a statewide story. <laughs> that's that's not, that's not, that's you're never, you're never going to be able to go uh, interview players again. Uh, you're never going to be able to shake their hands. You're never going to be able to do I that. All your uh, interviewing, uh, as yeah. far as uh, the preseason uh, football players are, is over with. Yeah. Here's a challenge. Can anybody in this audience tell me one other man who has done as much on local TV for a local table vision as Mike Amos has? in the state nobody's even come close or even tried to well uh, hundreds of high school football games parades graduations meet the team days from college to high school uh you know events on the square i'm not even talking about today in la uh and it's all it's all done to promote your community, isn't it? No question about it. It's, it's, and the it's, people, it's the labor he, he, of love. He's, he's never he's never even been nominated for an Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you this: I, I'm probably different than most anybody. I walk around uh, uh, doing play by play, whether or not you're playing ball or you're uh, at the grocery store trying to find uh, milk uh, that is not hasn't been spoiled. <laughs> well, yeah, before Griff came on here, what was Mike saying? Any of you graduates that are watching call in yeah. so we can talk about you and if i haven't uh mentioned your name over the years uh uh i'm uh, i apologize because that's uh, what we did uh, i wanted people to know these kids who were playing sports and uh sacrificing to give me entertainment every friday night you know the, the, the only sport i think you never covered uh was walk a, a, a golf course with a mic and uh well a golf I, I, I have done some of that mike you haven't seen it but when, when, when was that yeah uh back in the early days uh there was a match oh uh, you come on like troy touch club yeah tournament? It, was, <coughs> it was matched between uh uh my uh, my oh gosh i'm trying to think of my buddy's name but he he was going uh against uh the pro, he was, he went up against the pro, and uh, and we we did do nine holes of footage, and it was really good. You know what, my he went, up, he went up against who? Sammy Rachel or no, uh, Joe no, Durant? No, he went uh, against our local pro. Oh, uh, uh, Tony Mitchell. Yeah, that's right. They, they and uh, Tony, you know, of course, is a great golfer, and uh, yeah, the, the Mitchells have been great to Griff and too. But I, yeah. I really should have found a way to mention them in the story. Uh, yeah. Tony and his wife. And you take a young guy like... Uh, well, I mean, uh, growing up in the country club, I mean, you always had great golfers. I mean, Drex Guthrie was a great golfer. Uh, both the Rogers brothers were great golfers. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of great young golfers come out of Troy. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right, and there, there still is uh, every day. And, uh, you know, uh, but, but like I said, see, uh, Griff, Griff loved it so much. He was out there every day, and, and he had a hard time finding somebody to play with. And I could understand how he would you know he, he would want somebody to be be there with him to watch you know everybody wants if i got a hole in one i want i got a hole in one i got a hole in one but nobody's around nobody's yeah, around to, to, to prove it but Griff, uh, Griff has had two hole in ones <laughs> yeah isn't that something and i bet you there's a story so where, where is golf.com based out of bill i think florida you know i just all i did was email the 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 editor uh but yeah, they're down in Florida, and it's, it's Golf Magazine. They own Golf Magazine, the print version, and then their website is golf.com. Yeah. So if anybody yeah, has... Justin, Justin Thomas is one of his heroes. Maybe they can set up a meet. <coughs> that would be kind of unique. Wouldn't that be something? They'll probably read it. You know, I'm sure all the golfers yeah. read golf.com, yeah. and so they'll, they'll know Griff. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, you know, the pro golfer from uh, Auburn, uh, Mike Griffin uh, coached, Mike, uh, Jason, uh, yeah, Doctor. we, we had a, uh, he promised, uh, uh, some people here in Troy that he would come down and do a clinic. Well, uh, that time came around and it was some, uh, actual, uh, uh, attorney tournament going on somewhere. You know what? That Friday he held a, a golf, uh, lesson, uh, a golf, golf clinic at the Troy country club. Wow. He's in my, he lives in Auburn, too. And, and, and I remember what I'm saying, though. He told them they, that he'd be there, and he missed the tournament to go do it, do, do the uh, clinic. Well, he, and, he, uh, he played for Mike Griffin. Mike Griffin. He played for Mike, and, and I'm sure Mike influenced him quite a bit. But uh, You know, I was reading an article uh, this morning about <laughs> Ohio State, and, and they said they plan on playing games with twenty to 50,000 fans. 
Oh, That's what right. I was thinking. That for them to get get everybody six feet uh, from each other. I want to see their, their stadium holds a hundred thousand, so it'd be very similar to you know what Alabama would have to try to do. Well, you listened in when Johnny Williams was talking yesterday, didn't you? Uh, uh, I was off. Y'all had me. Uh, y'all had y'all had Max and Johnny on. I listened right. a little bit on Facebook though. Boy, he just, he opened my eyes about some of the logistical issues that will be involved in staging football games. And that's one scenario he threw out is that to get the spacing, like everybody's talking about, you can only have about 25, 30% stadium capacity. Now, how you do that and get people in the right seats and rows, I don't know. Uh, but he said, yeah, he can picture games at Bryant Denny Stadium with 25, 30,000 people. Exactly right. And uh, you know, uh, Mike, uh, this this uh, story. The biggest thing is, uh, how, how do you determine the fans? I mean, through Todd Pride donorship, or right, right. Do you yeah, do, prior, do, you, do, you, do, a, do you do a lottery system? What do you do? That's exactly what I said. I think it'd be priority first. You know, who gives the money? It says no. It says no football. This is the headlines right now on ESPN.com. It's no football would cost four billion dollar dollars in revenue to college sports. Four billion with a B. Four billion dollars. That's right. And that's going to affect not just the the start and halfback. It's going to affect the uh, girls cross country runner and the swim team members oh, and yeah. the tennis team members. A lot they of these lose good, that revenue. Yeah, exactly. You're, uh, maybe maybe you started out with twenty <laughs> to fifty thousand fans, and as time goes on, maybe then you can uh, start adding more as the season goes. Yeah. Um, it seems like a, <clears throat> a lot of hassle. Uh, my question as I was hearing Johnny talk was, you know, they're also talking about taking your temperature before you go in and then wearing masks. That's right. And then red, red, lottery blue, systems red, for white. tickets and then set, spacing out and not having the band. And I'm just wondering, and then people are already hard up for money. I'm wondering how many people might just say, you know, the heck with it. Uh, I ain't going. Mike, we've got it some Yeah, right now, the Mid-American Conference announced multiple schedule changes, including plans to eliminate conference tournaments in eight sports. Cincinnati so far has dropped its men's soccer program. Old Dominion cut its wrestling program. Firm had shut down baseball and men's lacrosse. Bowling Green cut baseball. Central Michigan terminated men's track and field. And Akron announced it's eliminating men's cross-country, men's golf, and women's tennis. You know what Johnny so said? already what's been cut. Well, Johnny took, he mentioned that yesterday, too. Uh, he took it farther. He said, if things don't get better, you're going to have entire universities closed. And I will tell you another thing that's going to come into effect is Title IX, you know, women's sports. You know, you know if you have men's sports, so women uh, feel justified to have, the, have their sports. Well, I now. think what Mike just said, all those sports were men, so that, that they're, uh, because you got men mm -hmm. that play football, and you got to have roughly equal scholarships between men and women. You can't cut women's sports, so they're always going to cut the, the men's sports. You know, I keep on reading more and more articles about how it's possible that the Power Five conferences in these schools that have more of the money could just totally break away from the NCAA and start their own new, you know, conference, a new league. Um, I, I'm hearing talks about that as well. So there might not even be an NCAA, you know being involved after all this is said and done. Yeah. Mike, something a lot, I want A lot of people don't like to deal with Mark Emmert, who's the, who's the president of the NCAA right now. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I put my uh, faith mask on, and, you you know, if you're within a uh, certain uh, uh, length, uh, you, you, you need to, if you're out at the post office or you're at the grocery store around people, uh, that uh, this is, is not only to protect you from their germs, but their germs from your germs. So uh, the mask is very important. Something very important, Mike, uh, and I want everybody to hear this this morning. I don't know if you heard it or not, though, Mike. Pat Dye has the uh, the, the uh, uh, coronavirus, coronavirus uh, Mike, and he has some uh, <laughs> other conditions. That this could be very serious to Pat Dye, and, and of course... Uh, he's in the hospital. He's in the hospital, you're exactly right. And uh, we've had some other people that are... Pat Dye, Pat Dye's probably, what, 75? No, he's 80. He was no, he's 80, yeah. And he has some other existing conditions, so our prayers and our thoughts go out to Pat Dye this morning, uh, and uh, all the folks that have been touched by this 
terrible, terrible uh, uh, virus that has uh, affected the entire world and how we live. And uh, uh, again, though, we've got to be responsible. Let me tell you something. Nobody loves ball more than I do, Mike. You know that. You were born and raised with it. But, uh, hey, if it has anything to do with uh, saving folks' lives, uh, I say don't do it, you know? Boy, the, the, number, the number of cases are down so much over the last week. I mean, it's really starting to turn, uh, you know, in the right direction for us. Not as many cases, not as many deaths. So I, I really think the future looks bright. I think by the end of the month that uh, if we can get the cases down around 10,000, you know, a day and then the deaths, back around 500. I mean, Italy's opened back up. Spain's opened back up. You know, it's, it's one of those type of things. I think we're really getting close in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be very important to find out uh, will this virus come back and affect the same people? Yeah, yeah. Right. I want to know that too. I mean, uh, the, the, the big thing though is once you have the vaccine, you know, this is just going to be like a flu situation. So, yeah. um, you know, this time next year, we shouldn't even be having these conversations. Well, Johnny brought this out. You weren't, couldn't hear it, but uh, he made a point that I thought was excellent. That said that everybody assumes we're going to have a vaccine, but there has never been a vaccine that's been created for a coronavirus. Uh, so it's no sure thing at all that you'll ever have one, you know, or it'll be within nine months. Yeah. Yeah, there's a great chance the vaccine could come out of UAB. I mean, is what I've been reading. Yeah. I mean, that apparently their doctors have, uh, are really involved in all this as well. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, when, it's all, when, it's, when it's all said and done, I mean, the deaths are horrible. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's, you know, 91,000 people that have died. But, you know, when it's all said and done, I mean, I, if, if we can keep it under 150,000, I actually think that's going to be good considering, um, you know, you know, they were talking about 2.5 to 3 million deaths at one time. Yeah. You know, everybody that uh, graduated from Charles Henderson High School, and this is one thing that I think Charles Henderson kids can remember as well as any kids going to high school anywhere was their alma mater. Uh, the Charles Henderson High School alma mater will be sung today. And uh, Troy, I love it. Uh, proud we stand in southern yeah, sunlight, proud down we the top stand of the hill, in southern the work sunlight, way, giving us the work and play, giving us the will. Top of hill. Teaching us to work and play and giving us the will. Symbol for all men to come, the orange and blue to reveal. Nobody <laughs> best know that. Henderson High. Henderson High, no. our alma mater. All the Trojans now. Trojans now the hell. We know the words to that belt like we know the words to our national anthem. That's right. And we would we <laughs> sang it at every assembly. I knew it back then, yeah. Every assembly. Wait, well, so, well, was it a big deal uh, back in the day? Of course, I, I wasn't living like, I mean, did people like Troy High School? I mean, was it a big deal when they decided to change it to Charles Henderson High School and stuff? I, I'm sure it, it, it affected some people. A guy asked me the other day, we were riding around, and he said, where's the old high school? I said, well, it's uh, got a beautiful library. You know, Troy... <laughs> Troy might have the finest library for the size town uh, as you'll find anywhere. Rice, uh, you've done a lot of research, and you found a lot of it at the public library, did you? Now you find it on the Internet, but, yeah, our, our library is fantastic. And yeah, exactly. And a lot of you know, people they, use it. the greatest uh, power couple on 30A, and you know how, how, how uh, powerful 30A people are down here is Reynolds, Henderson, and Stacy Beard. Yeah, exactly. I mean, out, of, out of Troy, Alabama, what a powerful couple. I know they are. They're great people. And, uh, you know, she's my dance partner, too. And, of course, she, I tell you what, those beard girls, and there were two of them that were uh, cheerleaders at Alabama, uh, Carmen and, and Stacy. And, uh, and, and, uh, but you, all you got to do is look at their mother with the most beautiful smile in the world, Joan Beard. And, uh, and, and of course, uh, the, the wonderful, wonderful uh, Beard family. We got a call coming in right now. Let's uh, let's put you on hold, Mike. Good morning, you're on today in LA. How you doing? Hey, Mike. Will Matthews, what you up to? Will Matthews and Will Will probably hadn't read this story yet, but Will, uh, let me just throw a couple of things out at you. I will bring Mike Camus in here. Will, your good friend, and uh, let's see. I don't. I think I don't think I did it right. Let's see. All right, Will, we got you and Mike on right now. Hello, Will. 
Yeah, you got me. And Mike's on, and of course Bill Rice uh, sitting right next to us. And uh, uh, we've had a good show today, uh, Will. Uh, we're talking to Will Matthews. Uh, and Will, there's some things about this young uh, Griff uh, McCreary. Will probably doesn't know. Go to golf.com today, Will, and you'll see my story on Griff McCreary. Uh, I, I sent Will the article a while back. Okay. But the, 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 the... Did you read it, Will? All right, this kid right now, 5'8", 175 pounds, is hitting the golf ball over 300 yards every time he steps up. In fact, what did he say, 320? Yeah. Uh, he averaged, he's averaging 310, off, so. off the tee now. He's a, he graduated from high school at Charles Simpson, and he's got the Tourette, Tourette syndrome. And, uh, uh, you know, he's had to fight that, but this young man is quite a golfer. Have you read about him? I have, yeah. And he plans to play in the Future Masters, and I know you've been very involved with the Future Masters for a long time. That's going to be quite a story, don't you think? Well, if he makes good, yeah. Yeah, and of course, right now, you know, he's he's uh, uh, shooting in the high well, 80s, high, high 60s, the and low 70s. Uh, Joe Durant and uh, some PGA players, Champions Tour players, yes. are playing in right now. What is that, Will? What, what tournament is that? Michael, I played with Joe Durant and his son yesterday in the pro am. Oh wow! And uh, and they're they're senior tour players playing in it, PGA tour players playing in it, Corn Ferry tour players. They don't have anywhere to go, Michael. So they're kind of using this yeah. as a warm up. Durant played at Huntington, didn't he? Didn't he play at Huntington? He did, and he lives in Pensacola. Yeah. And uh, his son plays for West Florida, which is over in Pensacola. Yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite schools to organize. Yeah, his son's a good golfer. Yeah. 21 years old. And uh, Joe, uh, he's got two kids. He's got a daughter that's 27 and a son 21. He's been married over 30 years. But he's won four or five PGA tournaments and four or five senior tournaments. Did, uh, did, uh, what, what impressed you? What impressed you the most uh, in his game? What, what impressed you the most? Well, uh, he shot 68 yesterday and didn't really make a putt. Uh, he got it up and down. I think every time he was in a bunker, he got it up and down. Yeah, you know, the, you know, the bunker. You know, I, you know. Was this, was this playing at the Dolphin Country Club? You know, you know, the pros rather hit it out of the bunker than out of the rough, what do you think? Well, I tell you, I was impressed with him. Uh, first time he'd ever seen the course, and uh, he shot 68, which, yeah. which wasn't bad. Uh, 64 is leading. You know, people don't realize uh, what a great program Huntington had in golf uh, back in those days, the, six, the 70s and 80s. You know, their biggest com competitor was Troy. You know, they there were some good golfers came out of both of those programs, didn't it? Yeah, and, uh, you know, Troy, in particular, probably had one of the best two or three teams in the country, but they were playing a uh, small college. Yeah, Division um, Two. Didn't get to play anybody. That's right. Did he know, does he know your uh, co cousin, Doug Barron? Doug is... I talked to him, and Doug just had knee surgery. Mm. And he couldn't have knee surgery because of this COVID-19. They weren't allowing any, uh, you know. Yeah, any other surgeries. They were so tied up, yeah. Surgery, but he had knee surgery two weeks ago, and he's, he's starting to putt and chip, and he can be hitting balls like within a week. But he told me it's probably going to be two months before they go back on yeah. course. Uh. And Doug, Doug was yesterday called me. And I don't know how in the hell he knew I was playing with Joe Durant, but he called me because they're big buddies. And uh, anyway, Joe Durant said that Doug Barron owes me about fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Is that something? We have Will Matthews. Mike, I got him to play in the Senior British Open. That was his first tournament. Hey, uh, I'm. Uh, he won 85,000 pounds in 
that's about 150. Oh boy. Yeah, you told us this an amazing Cinderella story. Uh, matter of fact, I might do my next golf magazine story on your cousin, uh, Doug Barron. Yeah. Well, he won his first tournament having to qualify. Yeah. In New York. I was talking to uh, Jim Jackson and uh, Denny Crum Denny Sanford uh, yesterday at lunch, and uh, we were talking about uh, uh, you know some of these old uh, uh, golf tournaments. Uh, you know, Troy uh, for years has uh, probably hosted more four ball tournaments than any around. But right now, we uh, a, a lot of those uh, just local tournaments are are being canceled. Even though Troy had an invitational last week. Uh, and it went over pretty good. And of course, you've been open at both the country club the whole time, never closed. Yeah, but now you had to play one man per cart, though, didn't you? But yesterday we played two people per cart. Yeah. Okay, well, they, they, y'all are back then. Y'all are back. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, of course, well, we're gonna take a short break. We'll be right back to more. Brought to you by Bill Jackson Chevrolet, Bill Jackson Ford. Right here in Troy. We'll be right back. We've been doing business the right way for 31 years, and now we've approached a year at the all-new Bill Jackson Ford. But don't take our word for it. We feel our customers express it the best. I would recommend Bill Jackson to friend and family. Environment was just friendly. It's a short drive from anywhere. Troy Cable Security Wi-Fi Doorbell Camera allows you to answer the door from your smartphone when you are at home, at work, or on the go. When a visitor presses the button, Troy Cable Security sends a live video feed to your smartphone so you can see, hear, and speak to the person at your door. With the doorbell camera, you can have your porch light turn on automatically when it detects motion at night to create the appearance that someone is at home. You can view video clips so you can always know who stopped by when you are out. Troy Cable Security. You love them. Protect them. A personal touch, a high level of trust. Whether it's checking and savings accounts, personal or business loans, or our local friendly service. That's what Troy Bank and Trust customers expect. But now we offer more. Free identity theft protection for our new and existing customers. Protecting your family's time, money, and good name from identity theft. Because protecting your identity is now a big part of our identity. Here at Bill Jackson Chevrolet and Troy, we've been doing business the right way for 31 years. But don't take our word for it. We feel our customers express it the best. Been honest in everything we've discussed with them. When they said Jackson Satisfaction, they really mean it. The Jackson Satisfaction is... All right, so we've been doing business the right way for 31 years, and now we've approached a year at the all-new Bill Jackson Ford. But don't take our word for it. We feel our customers express it the best. I would recommend Bill Jackson to friend and family. Environment was just friendly. It's a short drive from anywhere. Troy Cable Security Wi-Fi Doorbell Camera allows you to answer the door from your smartphone when you are at home, at work, or on the go. When a visitor presses the button, Troy Cable Security sends a live video feed to your smartphone so you can see, hear, and speak to the person at your door. With the doorbell camera, you can have your porch light turn on automatically when it detects motion at night to create the appearance that someone is at home. You can view video clips so you can always know who stopped by when you are out. Troy Cable Security. You love them. Protect them. A personal touch, a high level of trust. Whether it's checking and savings accounts, personal or business loans, or our local friendly service. That's what Troy Bank and Trust customers expect. But now we offer more. Free identity theft protection for our new and existing customers. Protecting your family's time, money, and good name from identity theft. Because protecting your identity is now a big part of our identity. Here at Bill Jackson Chevrolet and Troy, we've been doing business the right way for 31 years. But don't take our word for it. We feel our customers express it the best. Been honest in everything we've discussed with them. When they say Jackson Satisfaction, they really mean it. The Jackson Satisfaction is real. But I want to also mention today, ladies and gentlemen, Premier Dodge Chrysler Jeep has a huge sale going on on the bypass right here in Troy. If you're looking for a, a Dodge Chrysler Jeep or Ram truck, believe you me, no better place than right here in Troy. Uh, and I promise you this, uh, they'll, they, they'll beat anybody's price, anybody's price uh, on, uh, on uh, these uh, beautiful Dodge Chrysler Jeeps and Ram trucks. Yeah, uh, I plan on going today. Uh, uh, I've been getting uh, getting it to go. I've been getting everything to go. 
they say, if you, of course, they open at, at 1030 today at such as, well, Will loves such as, too. He, he, he eats there a lot. I love well, sisters, yeah. I yeah. Now let me ask this: Is the old Ice House still serve food? Yes, they have lunch. It's very good. Oh well, you remember the Ice House was a big time restaurant at one time. Yeah, it's very good. But let me ask this: Why is your Mexican restaurant better than everybody else's? Uh, you know, we got people from Troy. We got four or five Mexican restaurants here in Troy, and a lot of them still go down to Ozark. What's the deal there? Has it, has it been the same cook for all these years? Yeah. Hey, guys, let me call you back. Okay? All right. Okay, brother. Take care. And uh, Will Matthews is off the line. We'd love for somebody to call in and, and sing the Charles Henderson High School alma mater. We'd yeah. love to have somebody <laughs> sing. Uh, let's see. Uh, how, 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 in the world, how in the world do we uh, not know the alma mater? We both went to school there. Well, all right. Let, all right. How does it begin now again? I can't remember. Uh, I, mean, I, I can remember it <laughs> once we get it going, but it's 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 a, a song that most all Troy Charles Simpson graduates, even as old as I am, uh, uh, I mean, could, I, I want to say it's like proud song. we stand in southern sunlight, yeah. gym atop a hill, teaching us to work and play and giving us the will. Um, I can't remember after that, to be honest with you. Strong imperial spirit burns. Through time's Maybe. eternal veil, Henderson High, our alma mater, all Trojans now the hell. Henderson High School of Troy, the kids will graduate today at 10, 10 o'clock from Veteran Stadium. If you'd like to go out and, and look at it from a distance, and I imagine you... I wonder, you, I wonder how they're going to stagger the crowd into the stadium. I don't know. Six at a time, I guess. That's, this is going to be really interesting each, to watch. Each family has uh, five tickets, and I imagine there's a, a lot going on uh, with a, will a Troy, lot of... Will Troy Cable have cameras there? Is Troy Cable going to be there? Yes. Is that right? Is Troy Cable going to be there for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, graduation? And uh, But, uh, of course, it's just wonderful that we're able to do it, and I appreciate uh, uh, the... Uh, folks at Charles Henderson High School, the superintendent of education, uh, who uh, right now they're in uh, uh, search of a new superintendent, but also the principal and uh, anybody that has anything to do with this graduation ceremony, we appreciate it very much uh, that these kids will be recognized uh, as a group of the class of 2020, Charles Henderson High School of Troy, and we are awfully proud uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think Goshen had their uh, graduation ceremonies yesterday. Well, they, I think they were there having two two graduation ceremonies to stagger it. Yeah, no, exactly. No one today. And uh, anybody from Goshen can call in. And uh, Pike Liberal, uh, they haven't had theirs yet. Is that right? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to find well, out. Mike, I noticed that the uh, Alabama High School uh, uh, all-star games in football and in basketball are going to be played. Did you know that? When will that be played? Like the, later in July? Well, I've got it. I've got it scheduled for. Uh, well, I did. Uh, let's see. Maybe. I, maybe I. Uh, well, shoot. Uh, oh, July fourteenth. The basketball game will be July fourteenth, and I want to say the football game be on the 15th so uh, something similar to that we'll try to find out more information on it uh, i notice uh that uh some of these kids that are playing destroy, are, uh, destroy, uh, have fireworks uh, memorial day weekend no, or is that just july 4th july 4th i think uh you know and of course they have a wonderful fireworks demonstration then and uh uh hopefully by the fourth gosh a lot of this will be over with i don't know if uh uh, are, are, are will be making great strides into being over. Uh, let me just say this: this mask is important now. Not not knocking Bill, but but uh, you know when somebody's coughing over here, those the, it gets in the air, and if if I'm not wearing my mask, I'm breathing all that in. 
But yes, they say yeah, I'm then, then you bring it home to your wife, Caroline. Yeah, all right. Uh, and and, and uh, <laughs> she makes sure that I wash my hands when I walk in that door. All but, right, big news out of the NCAA college football, basketball can resume workouts June 1st. Oh, me, that's great. So uh, that's huge news coming out. Um, so uh, that's what was kind of expected from the meetings that took place. So uh, it's going to be controlled uh, by each state as um, far as, you know, the NCAA has uh, come out and made that statement. Yeah. Mike, I'm going to see if I can uh, reach. Uh, uh... I mean, that, that's, that's really uh, really positive news uh, for anybody who wants sports to start up. Yeah, you're right. And again, how they're going to do it uh, and the logistics, lo the word logistics or uh, logistics is yeah, going to come into play. Yeah, we about it all the time. The SEC's got an unlimited supply of money. Yeah, I know it. And, uh, millions and millions of dollars. I mean, just like we said, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, the threat of losing $4 billion is just, you know. And, and I, can, yeah. I, I can see it. Uh, I can see it without fans and with fans. Uh, you know, like you said, Ohio State uh, will uh, uh, have it set up for 50,000 uh, fans instead of the 100,000 normally they are. That and means when you ride by Troy's, you know, football stadium and practice field, you'll see the players actually out there running and working out and, and actually, you know, getting in shape. You know, you can't be with your coaches. You can only be with your strength coach. Well, I tell you what, it's something. conditioning coaches. So you'll actually start seeing actually Troy athletes on the field. Yeah. I wonder where they uh, about ten days. You know, that's one of my fun things that I love to do every year is to watch them practice, and uh, uh, I, I'm wondering if they let me out there. They might not even let me near that place. You uh, know, well, you can, if you know if they're on a the practice field, you can always just sit in your car and watch them. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing we we talked about for years. Troy has the uh, most open to the public practice facilities of all time. Yeah, I've always said you could at Troy you could sit. Uh, you, Take your family and sit on sit in midfield and uh, watch practice, and we will hear very very little vocabulary, <laughs> not vocabulary, but uh, bad language. Uh, and uh, I can't can't say it's always been a fact because uh, certain certain coaches coach different ways. But uh, like when Chan Gailey was head coach at, at Troy and, and um, Rick Rhodes. And Robert Maddox, the last thing in the world you'd hear would be profanity. They just, just would not put up with it. And that's the way Troy ran the program. And you know what? They run two national championships during that time, too, in 84 and 87. They, uh, I tell you what I, I would love to do before the season starts, the, the biggest interview we could possibly have would be with Chan Gailey, the offense coordinator of the Miami Dolphins, talking about Tua Tuma Baloa. Yeah, that'd uh, be fun. You know, th th that would be uh, that would be a great uh, get if we could get him on uh, Troy Cave on our show one morning. That would be wonderful, and I, I, I would uh, I would I would be shocked if he wouldn't come on with us, considering the relationship we've had over the years. I, there's no question in my mind that that uh, that Chan Gailey would come on this show. No question. You know, I mean, it, it, it's still amazing to me as a kid growing up in Little Troy, Alabama, that this guy would be over at his house playing with Tate, his son, and. Of course, we always would spend a night over there. He'd come to my house and spend a night. And little did I know, when this guy came home and would bring in pizza, that he would be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys yeah. and the Buffalo Bills. And now he's at 68 years old, the yeah. offense coordinator of the Miami Dolphins. You know, I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a book about Chan Gailey one these days. I'll tell you out. something else about him, too. You know, everybody talks about how godly a man uh, Bobby Bowden was, how he preached to groups all over the country. Uh, but... Uh, let me just say this. I've seen many times where uh, Chan Gailey would, would uh, be in an airplane that, that led or on a bus that drove all the way from their game on Saturday night. And the first thing he'd do Sunday morning would be rush over to the First Baptist Church and teach Sunday school and also uh, be, be doing the uh, offering as a, as a deacon in the First Baptist Church. Chan Gailey was that kind of guy. Let me. Uh, yeah, put, if, if Gailey would have stayed at Troy. I mean, of course, Rick Rose won a national championship as well. But, I mean, I mean, I, I can't imagine how many in a row Troy would have won under Gailey and, and maybe how many they would have won under Rhodes. Yeah. I mean, Troy would have won several more national championships in yeah. Division Two. I would love to hear a young lady with a great voice or a young man with a great voice sing the Charles Henderson High School uh, alma mater before we go off the air at uh, 830. 
So I need somebody to well, call we'll, in we'll right now. On, we'll be on tomorrow if anybody can call in tomorrow. Yeah, but the graduation's tonight, today. I mean, this afternoon at, at 10, and uh, we're looking forward to that. And, uh, and, of course, we want to congratulate all the seniors uh, in our listening audience. And then on Facebook Live this morning, uh, uh, which well, you know. I'm just glad they're able to have a graduation. You know, my, we've been extremely spoiled. My kids have been back in preschool down here yeah. for three weeks. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I wish, you know, that it would have worked out where these kids could at least maybe spend the last couple of weeks together at school. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was talking to some friends about that yesterday, you know, about senioritis and how close you get with your classmates when you kind of know it's coming to an end. All the parties and all the things you do. And, of course, you know, we went on a senior trip up to uh, the Bahamas. And, I bet. I, I guarantee you, you won't see any of that. <laughs> I promise you, uh, you won't. I mean, I know you won't. But, I mean, it, and, and also, the thing that's so crazy is, you know, Beach Week is now kind of going to be totally different. I mean, I'm sure there'll be thousands and thousands of people coming down here, but... And it's Memorial Day weekend, but, you know, the first of Beach Week, that was always just, like, the greatest thing ever. You know, school's out, and then you get down here, and there's kids from all over the southeast, and you're riding around just, I mean, just seeing people everywhere. I mean, I'm sure it'll be just like, that, you know, in some places, but, you know, with the, the break, I would imagine several families have already made their beach trips yeah. so far. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to mention again that our prayers and our thoughts are with the John Little family. You know, we lost John early part of this week, uh, the uh, CEO of uh, Sabre Corporation, and uh, what a wonderful guy he was and great friend. And, Mike, they had that funeral at the First Baptist Church yesterday, and uh, they they had people six feet apart, but they put a lot of people in there, and it was a wonderful service, and uh, John Little... Uh, uh, will I'll forever be remembered uh, uh, from this uh, announcer uh, as one of the great people to ever live in Troy, Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, I mean, he, he was just a great human being, super nice guy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that they were able to have that many people in the church, and and uh, you know that many people were able to be there and and, and you know basically and, uh, give their uh, respects and their tribute. To the family. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that they were going to be able to have such. So many people in a church so far with these phase one rules, and I don't know. I don't know if Alabama's different um, than Florida. I know in Florida, I think you can only have ten people at a time yeah. in a church. Um, so I didn't know how that all worked out in Alabama. Well, uh, and of course, uh, again, a great church, uh, First Baptist Church in Troy, and uh, and then of course they they had the uh, visitation across the street at uh, at his home. Which you know is right across the street from the church. You know, uh, it was uh, the logistics there were very, very uh, easy, and uh, a lot of people were were in the front yard. That, what a what a beautiful ceremony it was, and what a beautiful uh, uh, event uh, uh, following the you know the bit with the visitation. Uh, I want to mention uh, again, we're looking for. Uh, that uh, somebody that can really sing that Charles Henderson High School alma mater. Of course, uh, 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 call in right now. We'll let I, you have I don't, two minutes. I don't figure we'll get it in. It's already 827. <laughs> well, you do. You did a pretty good job just a while ago. And, uh, uh, of course. Should I, should I be a sh shame to myself? I can't remember my high school. Alma well, I, I, listen, I, I, if I started singing it, I probably could remember it, but I, I, I'd be sort of embarrassed, you know. But, uh, I, think, uh, I think we used to, uh, that uh, after football games. After every game, football. they still do it. They still do it after every football game. The cheerleaders and uh, the band play, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the Charles Cincinnati School alma mater. It was written in the uh, 60s, in the uh, late 60s. It was the, 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 well, actually, it was, here we go. Somebody's calling in right now. This is, this is on the uh, cell phone. Yeah, exactly. Hello, how you doing? No, it was, <laughs> that was somebody calling my phone. So uh, uh, that was. Well, it's, it's time to wrap it up anyway. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll find somebody to do it tomorrow. Yeah, no question about it. And of course, again, congratulations to all of you graduates out there uh, for 2020. And we'll always remember that day uh, when Charles Henderson High School graduated their senior class of 2020. 20. Hope you had a great day today uh, and a wonderful uh, uh, weekend. Of course, Memorial Day weekend coming up on Monday where we'll be shut down, but we will show a uh, uh, one of our former 
uh, uh, yeah, show. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a show tomorrow. Exactly. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. We've been doing business the right way for 31 years, and now we've approached a year at the all-new Bill Jackson Ford. But don't take our word for it. We feel our customers express it the best. I would recommend Bill Jackson to friends and family. Environment was just friendly. It's, it's a short drive from anywhere. Troy Cable Security Wi-Fi Doorbell Camera allows you to answer the door from your smartphone when you are at home, at work, or on the go. 